You are listening to the Grown and Vegan Life Podcast, Episode 3. Welcome to the Grown and Vegan Life Podcast. I am your host, Deanna Rohde. On this podcast, we talk about being vegan from the perspective of being healthy. And we take a deep dive into being healthy in the other areas of our lives, like relationships, money, and mindset. The ultimate goal is to be whole and to experience joy in our lives, not just our eating. So we look at both practical and spiritual ways to experience optimal health. The main thing to remember is that nothing in this show is meant to replace medical advice from a trained professional. I am sharing my experience and the experience of my guests. Please use wisdom and take what you feel will work for you. Now, let's get started with today's episode. Hey everyone, really quick, I wanted to start to share the wonderful dishes that I'm preparing for you on my YouTube channel. This week, I made this delicious three bean stew. It's a Jamaican inspired dish and it is so savory and so delicious. I would love for you to go and try this out. This is the perfect meal at this time of year. Where I'm at, it's been cold. Had a taste for something that would stick to my bones and really warm me up. I was in between grocery store runs and I was able to make this stew with the things that I had on hand. So visit the Grown and Vegan YouTube channel and find the Jamaican inspired three bean stew recipe. Hello everyone. I hope that you had an amazing week. This week has been for me a little bit of a challenge. I had some things that I had to deal with this week, but I'm thankful that I finally got a resolution and those things have been taken care of. But I think that at this time, many of us are dealing with various challenges that we're facing. So we have to make sure that in these times when we are dealing with stress, that we're taking care of ourselves. And we do that by getting rest, of course, and by eating well. So today I wanted to talk to you about why people don't go vegan. And this is something that I've been wanting to discuss when I first started this podcast. Um, You know, as I was thinking about starting it and doing the podcast, I really wanted to talk about topics around vegan lifestyle that I don't really hear a lot of people talking about. And I think that the reason is because there are so many different reasons why people become vegan. And I've kind of touched on this a little bit in my intros, but, you know, I discovered when I first became vegan and I got into this community, how strongly people feel about their conviction on being vegan. But there are just just as strongly as people feel about it, there are some people who feel that strongly against it. And I have ran against people or, you know, I've come across people on both sides of the fence, both sides of the spectrum. But I want to talk about why people don't go vegan because it's really one of my goals in my work in Grown and Vegan to be able to tear down some barriers against this lifestyle because it's such a great way of taking care of ourselves when we do it correctly that I don't want people to feel that they're not able to do it. And I want to really work on tearing down the barriers and the different things that keep people from taking that leap to even try it. So, you know, to not feel that they just can't do it or they don't want to because of the different things that surround being vegan. So today I want to dig into 
about three different ways or three different reasons that I have discovered that people don't go vegan. And hopefully by the end of this conversation, we'll be able to agree or respectfully disagree about this vegan lifestyle. But one of the first reasons that I have discovered that people don't go vegan is they just don't have a desire. They don't have a, they just don't have one ounce of desire to give up meat. They love meat and it's not even on their radar to not eat meat. And in America where I am, Meat really takes the center stage of the plate. I grew up that way. You know, vegetables are considered a side dish, not a main dish. And I remember when I first started sharing some of my vegan recipes, you know, I've even had comments where people, you know, say things like you're just eating sides. Or I remember making a mushroom, a portobello mushroom um steak and that was my considered my main part of the meal and then I had sides of different vegetables but you know for some people they were like well I guess that's the main course or the main (laughs) you know it's just confusing to us to really understand if veggies is are the only things on your plate what's the main dish (laughs) So, you know, it's just our mindset. It's the way that we, many of us grew up, that meat was the main thing. Meat is, it gets the center stage. And so many people don't, it's not even a conversation. In fact, there are several people who I've come across that don't even like the taste of vegetables. I am thankful for the fact that even though meat has been a main staple in my life growing up that at least I did learn to like vegetables and to include those in my meals. Whereas there are many people who just don't even really like vegetables or if they do, it's very limited to the spectrum of vegetables that they will eat. I've seen people who, you know, they'll make a salad and basically their salad is lettuce cheese and dressing (laughs) and to me that is just no no that's not salad that's a garnishment or something I don't know what it is but it's not a salad to me but you know at least they were making an effort so you know people don't go vegan because they just don't have a desire to go vegan um it's not even something on their mind The second reason why people don't go vegan is because of the extreme veganism views that are surrounding. And I have been waiting and biting at the bit to really share this part of of the show um, because I, you know, sometimes I'm in different vegan groups and getting recipes, ideas, different things like that, communicating with other vegans. And I saw a post about a young person that ran across someone that told them that they were not vegans or vegans don't have dogs or vegans don't have animals. And I thought, oh my goodness, really? (laughs) You know, it's those types of ideas. And I've seen different ones. I've had people troll my YouTube channel and say different things about, you know, post if I have something that has the word fish in it, when it's a vegan dish, that it offends some people. And my thing about it is that, you know, that really is a reason that keeps people outside of the vegan spectrum or vegan lifestyle because of dealing with this extreme thoughts and feelings. And it's very unfortunate that people are are like that. Now, everybody is not like that. Like I have said before, 
People go vegan for various reasons. My complete reason for going vegan is for my health. I did not come to this lifestyle because of, you know, while I respect people who are vegan because of animal rights, that is not my journey. I cannot say that with conviction that that is why I turned vegan. So, you know, I respect that. I understand it. But it it's unfortunate that that is the, um, for some people, that's the only reason. Because to me, if that's the only reason, that leaves out really trying to go for the health reasons of being vegan. And I think that that is where people miss out on this lifestyle because plants have power to really enable our bodies to work in a way that they can be healthy and create a healthy environment within us. So being vegan because of those convictions, I respect that, but it it does sometimes keep people away who don't really have those same feelings. They don't necessarily want, those are the type of people that you're not going to scare away from eating meat just because you tell them all of the horror stories that that happen or that you have information on regarding meat, whether you want to, you know, bash, basically what I'm trying to say is bashing meat is not attractive to certain people. It's not, they're not going to come to become vegans just because people bash meat and tell them all of the disgusting things that they know about it. Now, for me, I have watched the different documentaries and I will say there have been seasons of my life where I didn't want to eat certain things. I didn't want to eat cheese for a very long time after watching a certain documentary. I didn't want to eat certain foods because of those things. And even in reading books, it does not make me want to eat meat after listening to that information. But eventually that wears off. Eventually you get your mind around that and you can, you know, kind of put it to the back of your mind and go ahead on and eat your meat if that's the only reason. So... For me, it has to be a deeper reason than that. And I think that for many people, it has to be more than that to keep them from eating meat. They need to have, I believe that everyone needs to have some type of connection that is truly purposeful that will help you to stick to that plan. Because scaring people away from it is not necessarily going to keep them from doing it. So extreme veganism to me is unfortunate. It's not necessary. And, you know, like I said before, when I was beginning my journey or midway in my journey, whatever, that veganism to me, it's not a religion. It's not something that it shouldn't be so legalistic. It shouldn't be so strict to where people, even now, I have had people who will, if I post something, they want to know what brand it is. They want to know what's, you know, different things. And and the purpose of that, at least the way I perceive it, is that they want to know, is that really vegan? Or, you know, it's like there's vegan police. And my thoughts on that are, I believe everyone should do their due diligence in finding out if something is vegan because a lot of times people will put brands will put stuff in there that is not vegan and it's like for no reason why do you have to have milk in you know certain things that just really don't need milk why do you have to put you know different meat products in things that shouldn't even have milk or shouldn't even have meat products in it it's just It doesn't make sense, but that's just the way of the world. So we can do our due diligence to make sure that we're eating something that is vegan. But if somehow something slips by and we miss it, we should not feel 
condemned for doing that. People should not be so strict. And we really need to learn to show ourselves some grace, especially if you are new to the vegan journey, if you are transitioning. I was listening to someone the other day and I had to check myself because there are people, you know, they were talking about how that certain diets are not for certain people. They just don't work for everybody. And I had to think about that because some diets don't work for everybody. And we need to really be careful in beating ourselves up over trying to eat a certain way or do something that just is hard and it doesn't work. It may not make you, it doesn't work with your body or whatever. I just think that we need to be kinder in that space and not feel that we have to watch what everybody is eating, watch if they're doing it a certain way. So many people are so quick to jump on comment sections and different things and just tear people up for something not being exactly right. Cross contamination, it's not vegan, it's this, that, and whatever. And I just think that if we just worry about our own food, that we would probably be way more happier. (laughs) Worry about your own plate. That's probably what I feel about the extreme veganism. And that goes on the other side as well for people who are not vegan. Some people get upset with vegans for wanting to make things that imitate meat or or are similar to meat but plant-based and some people are just genuine genuinely curious as to why vegans were would do that um some people get irritated some people get very very upset about it and so it's an us against them type mentality sometimes and i really wish that that was not the case I really wish that people who don't want to be vegan felt better about their decision to not be vegan. And I wish that people who are vegan did not feel the need to try to make people who aren't vegan feel bad or people who are newly vegan, you know, correcting every little thing. Um, I try to, if I share, if I'm in a teaching space and I'm teaching people about veganism, you know, how to eat vegan, then I will, you know, let them know if something's not correct, but I want to do it with grace and kindness because it, I didn't learn how to eat this way overnight. And I still may slip up sometimes if there's something that I'm not aware of. It's a process. It's a journey. And the bottom line is, We need to focus on, I feel, about the health reasons for it. It's healthier to eat plants. Our bodies were created to eat plants. And so that is my main goal. That is what I desire to help people with. And I want to tear down the barriers that keep people from wanting to even be vegan because of extreme veganism. The last reason that people don't go vegan And to me, this is the main reason, at least for why people either don't go vegan or they struggle with staying vegan once they start. One of the biggest ways or one of the biggest mistakes I think that a person can do when they want to go into being vegan is to to approach it in the same way that they do their normal eating. If they're used to being meat eaters and they plan their meals and they just go head on into trying to eat vegan for a certain period of time in the same mindset as a meat eater, then nine times out of 10, you're probably not gonna make it through that whole time. At least if you do make it, you're probably gonna be miserable on your journey. And it just doesn't have to be that way. It can be an enjoyable time. 
But the key to allowing it to be joyful and allowing it to even be easy is preparation. So if you can't, if you're not prepared for going vegan and eating that way, then you're probably not going to be able to make it through the whole duration. You have to have things in place. You, you know, you have to look at your lifestyle. If you're a busy person, you know that you're probably going to need to prep. And I just recently finished up a, a 10 day vegan challenge with a group of people um, that wanted to do this challenge with me. They did my vegan challenge. And one thing that I learned, um, this is my first challenge. And so it was really awesome to be able to have a group of people that were eager to learn and eager to do this. I had a great and amazing time and a great group of people. Um, But one thing I learned is that meal prep is key. So in restructuring that program, I will include meal prep into that because I'm a person, I have more time to be able to plan and prepare my meals than maybe someone who is working a nine to five and they have small children at home, they have a hubby at home and all of that. I don't have those things at this time, that those time constraints. And so for me, eating a vegan diet is different than someone with those different hats that they wear. And so I learned that I need to, you know, to help someone in that situation, I need to be able to teach them how to prepare for the week. And so meal prep is very important. If you don't necessarily want to eat the same thing every day and you don't want to, you know, prepare 10 meals that are the exact same and you want to You don't have to necessarily do that. There's different approaches to meal prep. And that's something that I will be sharing soon um, in how to do that if you want to transition. I want to be able to help people to transition into being vegan or if you just want to go short term. And I have set out a goal. I'm revamping my entire website and changing the whole direction of it to where I can be an assistance be of assistance to people who are wanting to do that. Because what I've discovered is I realize my goal is not necessarily to make you be vegan. If you don't want to be vegan forever, I realize that even doing plant-based for a short term can be beneficial. If you are wanting to do a detox or you wanting to cleanse your body, you want to move through an illness sometimes, Plant-based is a very good way to be able to do that. And so I want to be able to help people who maybe want to just do plant-based short-term or if you do want to commit to that, then to transition over the long-term. Maybe you do the short-term in the beginning and you discover how good it makes you feel, you love it, and you want to go for the long-term. So those are things that Grown and Vegan will begin to offer now. Um, And, you know, I've loved to share recipes. I've loved sharing my tips as I have transitioned and learned all these different things about being vegan. Um, And I've been in this lifestyle to the point where I know, you know, I'm committed to it, to doing the very best that I can. I've learned some things about myself. I've learned some things about this lifestyle And I feel that now I'm in a position where I can help others in a greater capacity. And so I want to expand beyond just the foodie category. I want to move beyond the foodie category into the facilitating category and the assisting category. And so those are things to look out for with Grown and Vegan. Um, There are things that... Um, I'll be able to share with you in the future. But I wanted to just break all of this down and talk about these reasons because maybe you find yourself in one of those categories. Maybe you see yourself um, in the first category where, no, I don't desire to be vegan at all. That's perfectly fine. I understand and that's, you know, where you want to be. 
Maybe you are in the category of you've dealt with someone who has just been too extreme about it or preached at you about it. Maybe you tried it and it was too hard because you didn't maybe prepare or you didn't have someone to help you go get along. I know before, years ago, before I ever got to this place, I tried to do vegan and I wanted to do it so bad. Um, And I tried to ask the questions and you can get in certain groups on Facebook or different places. And people who were in the lifestyle for a long time, they didn't want to ask, they didn't want to answer the the newbie questions. They don't want to answer your questions. They don't want to keep saying the same thing over and over again. Um, And so... That can be discouraging, but I was looking for some way to show me how to do it. It feels overwhelming, and to think back on that now, it's like, wow, I can't even believe that I was in that space where I just, I couldn't get my head around eating vegan. I just didn't understand it. I didn't know how I could do it. Where, how would I get all the food that I need to eat, and what do I what do I do when I don't have any snacks and how do I do this and that? And so I'm so glad that I've been able to transition through all of those hurdles and finally get to a place where now I know how to fix some food. Even if I need to go to the grocery store and I only have a few things on hand, I know how to be able to whip something up that is vegan to stock my pantry and to do different things. So there's skills is my point. Being vegan and eating vegan and cooking vegan are all skills. And so you have to be patient with yourself. You have to not beat yourself up because you didn't make it this week or you messed up on a meal or you decided, "Ah, I just want to eat meat for a, a little while or whatever it is. Show yourself some grace and don't Beat yourself up over that. It's very hard to change our life in an instant. It can happen. Just like you hear the stories about people who stop drinking in an instant, stop smoking in an instant. It's possible, but it's not usually the case. Those are very extreme cases where people just Walk away cold turkey. It's very possible, but it's not always the case. So before I end this podcast, I want to leave you with one last thought. Is your plate, are the things that you have on your plate and the things that you put in your body, do they align with the purpose and the plans that you have for yourself in the future. Thanks for listening. You have been listening to the Grown and Vegan podcast. Be sure to join us next week for a brand new episode. In the meantime, visit grownandvegan.com for more information and visit YouTube to subscribe to the Grown and Vegan YouTube channel. You can also follow Grown and Vegan on Instagram and Facebook.